بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم من بعد continuing on in our study of اصول السنة by Imam Ahmed رحمه الله تعالى may Allah bless him with جنة فردوس Imam Ahl al-Sunna fi wal jama'a and some of the benefits I wanted to mention this is the eighth lesson and I wanted to mention some fawaid some benefits from Shaykh uh, Ubaidah Jabri Hafidhullah Ta'ala in his explanation especially regarding although we've covered this aspect of the treaties but the Shaykh mentioned some very beneficial things about when having debate with Ahl Bidah about those principles of Ahl Sunnati with Jama'ah the Salaf of this Ummah regarding debating and regarding controversy and so forth. And uh, Imam Ahmed said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said, وَتَرْقَ الْخُصُمَاتِ وَجَلُوسْ مَا أَصْحَابِ الْأَحْوَى وَتَرْقَ الْمِرَى وَجِدَالْ وَخُصُمَاتِ فِي الدِّينِ Imam Ahmed, Rahimahullah Ta'ala said, he said, and leaving off controversy, and sitting with the people of desires and leaving off debate and argument regarding the religion. That this is a qaida and one of the uh, foundations of the sunnah that Imam Ahmed is talking about and the foundation of uh, Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah that forms the basis of their aqidah. So Sheikh Ubaid said some, some benefits letting us know that there's a that primarily you can break it down to two types of uh, mujadala or or uh, debate of types of debate. There's the permissible type and there's the impermissible type. And so let's hear what the Sheikh has to say. Hafizallahu Taala. Qala Sheikh Obeid. He said, "Ahaduhuma ban al haq bi dalil hada sunnah wa dalil kada wa hada bid'a wa dalil kada." هذا محمود وهذا هو الذي يصنعه السلف ما خصو ما خصومهم من المعتزلة وأشاعرة وجهمية قبلهم أو الخوارج خوارج وغيرها وغير ذلك. So the Sheikh mentioned حفظ الله تعالى. He said the first type of مجادلة or debating. Is a permissible type, and it is done for the purpose of making clear the truth with evidence. And this is the Sunnah. And he said, for example, by by saying, or be be the lil by for saying, have the Sunnah that this is a Sunnah, or um, or the dalil is this, the evidence is this, or this is bid'ah, or the dalil is this. He says this is praiseworthy. And this is what the Salaf used to do. This is a situation that's permissible that the Salaf used to do. What those people who tried to debate and argue with them. From the Mu'tazila and the Ashaira and the Jahmiyyah or the Khawarij or other than them, those groups that came before them. And so those groups, we may, we'll probably talk about them more in detail, but the Mu'tazila they uh, negated uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sifat and they uh, had aspects of tahrif with regards to the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they said that the, uh, the, the major sinner is neither a believer nor a disbeliever but that they're in between bayna manzilatayn Meaning they're, bain, they're between the fire and they're between Jannah. So this is some of the bid'ah that they came with. And then of course the Jahmiyyah and the Asha'ira. The Jahmiyyah, they were the Mu'attala. They totally negated uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sifat. You know, saying that yes, Allah is Ar-Rahman, but basically without Rahmah. That He doesn't have Rahmah. Because if you say He is Rahmah, it is like His creation. His creation has mercy as well. So these people, they negated the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is where their bid'ah came, came into play. 
amongst the other uh, ways in which they went astray. And then also the Asha'ira, which we have today, quite uh, uh, prevalent. And they also distort the meaning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sifat. For example, they say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they say, yes, uh, we agree that the ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ar-Rahman ala ars istawa. But then they say it means not istawa, which means rose above his throne. It means istola. It means that Allah, you know, he took it by force or that he possesses power and, and things like this. They make all kinds of ta'wil facet. You know, these are unsubstantiated claims that they have no right uh, to distort from the point of the Arabic language and the port point of how the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu propagated it and understood it. And Ahlul Sunnah has the middle course where we affirm what Allah affirmed about himself, we negate what Allah negated about himself, and we affirm what the Prophet sallallahu affirmed about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we negate what the Prophet sallallahu negated about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the tariqah of Ahlul Sunnah with jama'ah. Then the Shaykh mentioned the kind of the negative uh, khusumat. He said, Athani, so this is the, the second type, this is the second type of debate and controversy or, or argument. He says, Al Muhawarat Al Yuridu Kulluman Khasimain Fana Sahibuhu Ila Ma Yara Wahadahu Aladi Yadhimuhu Ahla Sunnah Yadhimuhu As Salaf Yadhmunahu So the Sheikh said, Hafidullah Ta'ala, he said the second type of khusumat uh, or debate and controversy, and this is the, neg uh, the, uh, the negative type. This is in which each party wants to support their view. It's not about establishing the truth. And we already mentioned this in our previous lesson, I think in the sixth lesson or the seventh one, that, or, or the fifth one, that each party wants to uh, assist their view and put forward their view and their opinion. So it's not about the, the purpose is not to come to the truth, the purpose is to win the argument or the debate. And this is Methmoom in the Salaf, uh, uh, we're very, harsh or very stern about negating this type of debate and avoiding it and avoiding the people of, uh, of Bida and Rai and of their opinions who wanted to indulge in this type of uh, debate. Those are just some of the benefits the Sheikh mentioned with regards to that and that's the main point there. And then he also mentioned an ethar uh, of uh, Umar bin al-Khattab al-Farooq where he said and he said beware of the people of Rai of the people of opinions you know those people who follow their desires they 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 put forth their view instead of going to how it was understood how it was revealed and how uh, it was understood by the Prophet Sallallahu and propagated by the Prophet Sallallahu and propagated by his Sahaba, what they were, uh, had ijma on and what that, and, and, and going with the, sh the evidences supported by the Quran and the Sunnah and the Salaf of this Ummah. And that's the difference between Ahlul Sunnah and Ahlul Bid'ah. So Ahlul Rai, as uh, uh, Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, he said, beware the people of opinion. They are the enemies of the sunnah. And the ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And they, they memorize them, but then they give their own opinion regarding them. You know, they explain it with their own, their own tafsir, their own explanation without going to how the salaf understood these verses and how the Salaf understood the Sunnah, the Ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
So they misguide people, or they're misguided, and they misguide others. So that's very important for us to understand. And you'll find many people, they'll say, we love tafsir al-rai, and that we are an ahl al-rai, and, and, and praise them, especially Ashadis, especially those people, because they're very influenced in their creed by philosophy and various ideologies that are foreign to Islam. And then those people who they take as their mutaqaddameen, they take as their, their salaf, their predecessors, some of them were very far in and in deep into uh, philosophical ideas that came from the Greeks and Roman traditions, and then they incorporate it into Islam and use that philosophy. That philosophy tainted their heart and tainted their ideas and distorted their concept of who Allah is. Primarily, who Allah is. They did not have a big problem with uh, in the early these early sects that we mentioned, the Jahmiyyah, the Mu'tazila, the Ashaira, uh, which were later, and so forth. They didn't have uh, as, as much problem with Tawheed al-Ibadah as much as the later groups that came uh, did. But instead, their inhiraf was with uh, Tawheed al-Asma'i wa Sifat. They distorted the Sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, either negated them in totality and those like the Jahmiyyah so that's why the Salaf made takfir of them or like the Asha'ira who negate some of them they actually negate them but they negate them by changing the meaning changing the meaning so they actually deny the true meaning and give it a new ta'wil and this is how they it's actually a negation of the true meaning but they're excused in the sense that they have uh, made this false misinterpretation and so that's why Ahl Sunnah doesn't make takfir of them for distorting the names of Allah Azza wa Jal, the, the meanings and, and going on meanings which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't intend, and nor did his messenger alayhi salatu wa intend, nor do they have evidence from the Salaf of this Ummah, radiallahu ta'ala anu majma'een. So this is very important to understand, and these are the primary lessons that we want to gain from this aspect of the treaty, and in our next sitting, we'll continue on where we left off. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.